Here at Axelar, we give a lot of demos of our general message passing capabilities where we send a simple string from one blockchain to another. But what if you wanted to send something more complicated? Hello, my name is Steven Fluin, and today I want to show you how to send more complicated messages using Axelar's general message passing. So in order to dive in, I want to actually take a look at a very simple contract here. So this is what you might be used to. So this is a normal message passing. This is, a lot, this is a lot of our demos and a lot of our examples where we have a send message method that is calling call contract. But then also we've got an execute method on the other end receiving that. And you can see we're passing a simple string that's being encoded as bytes. But because it's a bytes across the wire, you can actually send much more complicated things. And so I'm gonna show this in two different ways. First, I'm gonna show a piece of example code that we've written that takes advantage of this bytes capability to send something a little bit more complicated. Then I'll come back and show you one cool trick you can use to actually support multiple types of payloads. So first, let's dive over into our Axelor examples repo. So this is the fantastic repo we have with lots of examples that will help you get started with all sorts of different use cases. And the use case we're looking at today is calling contract with token. And this is a smart contract uh, written in Solidity where you're using instead of call contract to send a string, we're using call contract to send a token as well as an array of addresses. And so you can see we've got in our encode method here, we're encoding the array of addresses and we're calling the call contract with token method instead of the call contract method. And if we look at the destination code, the code that's executed on receipt on the destination chain, this execute with token method, we can see instead of decoding a string, we're decoding that address array. And then we're using that address array and the token that was passed along from chain to chain. And we're distributing that back to all those addresses and those recipients. So this is a really cool example where we're seeing that you can actually encode anything that can be uh, encoded as bytes in Solidity. You can send that with Axelar's GMP. Now, the second way that I want to show this off is I want to take that existing sample contract and I want to make it a little bit more complex. So we currently have this send message method that is able to update the message, that string message on the destination chain. But what if we want to be able to do multiple different things? Because oftentimes we'll have very complicated use cases where our smart contract might be able to receive different message types from another contract. And I'm going to show you a cool trick for doing that. So let's take for a moment our message. And what if we want to add a second parameter on our contract here? What if it's not just a message, but we want to be able to take in a uint that's called status. So imagine we're setting the status of this contract in a way that's meaningful to me. So now I need to be able to send a string or an integer. So the way that we're going to do this is I'm actually going to copy the send message function here and we'll say, uh, we'll call it send status. Now, instead of sending a message, what we're going to do is we're going to update all of this to be just a status. So we'll call it status and we'll call it status. But as you know, we have a problem here where our execution method doesn't know what it's receiving. And so the cool trick that I want to show off here is you can actually add another parameter here. So the way that I do this is I call this a method number. So we are going to have a send message where when we're encoding this as a string, we're going to send it with the number one. And when we're encoding it as an integer, when we're sending a payload of an integer, we'll just call that method number two. And what we can do on our execute side of the world here now is we can actually decode that method. And so what we'll say is we've got a, uh, let's say uint method. And what we'll do is we will set, uh, we need to put this in uh, here and we'll say our method is now going to be a decoding of our payload as a uint. And then what we can do is we can now put an if statement here where we check what method we have. And then we'll use that to decode the payload differently. So in the first case, we know that this is a uh, string. And so we'll ABI decode that as a uh, decode the exact same payload. We know that the first parameter is a method number that you went, and we know that the second parameter is a string. Uh, and then in our second case here, what we'll do is we'll check if the method is number two, then what we'll decode instead of the message, we'll decode the status. And we can actually pass a completely different structure here. So instead of uint string, it's going to be uint uint, because we know that if we specified method number two in our send status, then our payload is going to include a uint instead of a string. And so with that, I have built a system where I can build a very complicated, very capable smart contract capable of receiving different types of messages from different sources. That is going to be it for this demo. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next one.